In the third dimension, we use cubic volume to define space. In this video, we will assign a 3D cube of 50 by 50 by 50 cubic area of volume space that has 125,000 possible coordinate positions. Because all sides are equal, we can assume a 4D cube will have 50 times the assignable area than the 3D cube. In this example, we will use a 50 by 50 by 50 by 50 4D cube that has 6,250,000 possible coordinate positions inside its volume area. The fourth dimension uses an unlimited amount of 3D cubic volume space, but for the sake of things, we'll limit the volume area of the 4D cube to contain 50 entire volumes of 3D cubic space. Just as a 3D cube is made from X amount of 2D squares, our 4D cube is made up of nothing more than entire volumes of 3D cubic volume. The third dimension has three assignable coordinate positions to mark a current position in 3D space, length, width, and height, while the 4D cube has four assignable coordinate positions being length, width, height, and finally 3D volume index, which signifies which of the available 3D volume spaces are currently in use or being viewed. In this example, we see that there are exactly 50 entire volumes of 3D cubic space that we can choose to view by marking the fourth coordinate between 1 and 50 for the desired index of which 3D volume we wish to view. Every 3D volume space has length, width, and height in it. Therefore, we know those properties are global and can use the fourth coordinate to just mark which 3D volume index we would like to view. Of course, the fourth coordinate position declaring which 3D volume is in use will change when we physically move one unit of measurement that the grid is scaled on. This can be inches, feet, yards, etc. The perception of depth in the fourth dimension is based on samples per distance. One sample per X amount of distance. To keep things simple, we can just say that in our 3D cube, we assign the volume area of one cubic inch, where length, width, and height are all one inch per unit of the 3D volume. Being inherited by the fourth dimension, the primary function of the fourth dimension is to select which 3D plane is of interest to be viewed within the line of sight within 4D space. Inside the fourth dimension, the 3D cubic volumes of space are aligned in an array so each preceding 3D volume of space inside the 4D area of volume begins in an ascending order. The first 3D cubic volume of space to be included in the 4D array should be referred to as 4D. Coordinate position number 1 and the second 3D cubic volume of space to be included should precede the first entry of 3D cubic volume space and be considered to be the second 3D cubic volume of space. Included in the array of 3D cubic volumes that make up the depth of the 4D area of volume we would like to include to expand the line of sight. The first entry into the array is the first coordinate position of 4D space. The second entry of 3D cubic volume entered into the 4D array precedes the first entry and is placed into the array at an offset equal to but not greater than 1 cubic unit of 3D space. Length, width, and height remain the same in the fourth dimension per cubic volume of 3D space included in the array. As we can see here, there are two separate volumes of 3D cubic space included into the four-dimensional array. These would be 4D coordinate positions 1 and 2. 
The net of the 4D volume area depends on the number of complete 3D cubic volumes of space there are entered into the 4D array to be included in the line of sight within the fourth dimension, and also the height, width, and length of each 3D cubic volume entered into the 4D array. One 4D coordinate is an entire 3D volume. Many 2D planes aligned together in an array make a 3D volume. One 2D plane for every length height column in 3D space make 3D volume. In the fourth dimension, all 2D planes are visible in 3D volume at the same time. In the third dimension, only one 2D plane is visible at once, though we see many 2D planes here with different perspectives of the same object. We have to sort through them separately to comprehend their view. All of these 2D images are combined into a single 3D image in the fourth dimension to give a 3D perspective of universal space. Now we can take a look at what these 50 images of the same object look like from a 3D perspective. That is, we can see what this object looks like from a 3D perspective where all 2D planes are visible and rolled into one solid image completely changing the perception on how you would think a coffee machine would look like. Let's combine all of the 2D plane images and merge them together into one complete image to see what we get. While merging all the 2D images together into a solid image, we get a 3D perspective. In this image, the resolution is completely based on samples per distance. How this works is simple, from a 3D point of view as would be seen in the fourth dimension, the 2D planes that generate this image were spaced out evenly at a continuous resolution of one 2D plane image for every inch of 3D cubic space. Though we cannot see all 2D images at once, we can simply compile the entire array of 2D images into one single image to view universal space from a new three-dimensional point of view. The image here would be consider an entire 3D cubic volume of space equal to one 4D coordinate location in a four-dimensional array containing an entire 3D cubic volume of space. Here we can see four more examples of how the fourth dimension views our universe. In 3D, the first image on the top left is a ceiling fan taken at the resolution of one 2D image per cubic inch of physical 3D space using the same angle of 45 degrees from any coordinate position in 3D space. You can clearly see after compiling the image to 3D, there appears to be an unknown entity made of light orbiting the base of the ceiling fan. This is certainly an interesting find in that light made by the light bulb can be found in the 3D cubic volume area of space away from the physical matter, being the fan and globe the light is in. How can visible light float freely defying the physics of 3D space in 3D space? The next image on the top right is a 3D image of a filing cabinet with a resolution of 1 2D image per every 3D cubic inch of physical 3D space shot at 45 degrees from any 3D coordinate. As you can see here, the floor is completely visible through the filing cabinet which means the filing cabinet is somewhat transparent in the fourth dimension. We can also see that the floor alone has various amounts of depth in the perception of this 3D image. This is an example of looking downward in the fourth dimension. 
Metal filing cabinets are not transparent in our 3D physical space, but according to this image, metal can be transparent. The image on the bottom left is a 3D image of a stove taken at a resolution of 1 2D image per every 6 inches of 3D physical space. The end result after merging the 2D images together into a 3D image is phenomenal. Physical objects can shape shift evidently in the fourth dimension. In this image, you can see the fan to the right of the stove becomes disfigured. One of its fan blades is external from the metal housing onto the right of the midsection of the stove. We can see what appears to be another form of free-floating light that is not bound to or reflected from any surface of that magnitude. The visible light on the knobs of the stove, however, seem to fade. Notice how the fridge and fan both intersect with the stove. Objects can appear to be somewhere they are physically not. In this 3D image, solid matter interacts with other solid matter. Finally on the bottom left, we have a 3D image taken at a resolution of 1 2D image per cubic inch of 3D space. The image is a radiator inlet valve made of metal. It becomes disfigured while the clarinet and flashlight next to it appear fully intact. From our model of 53 d cubic volumes of space in this 4D array, we can assume you can extend your peripheral vision equally in all directions. 53 d cubic units to the left, 53 d cubic units to the right, and 53 d cubic units downward, 53 d cubic units upward. In recap, the fourth dimensional. Coordinate is used to decide which 3D cubic volumes of space you want to view in a four-dimensional array containing entire 3D cubic volumes of space. The 4D coordinate location increases or decreases as an entity physically moves from their current position in any of the 3D cubic volumes of space available in the array they are in as our 3D coordinate positions change when we physically move per cubic unit of 3D space the fourth dimension has direct access to any 3D cubic volumes that physically exist. Through the four-dimensional array containing entire 3D cubic volumes of space, the 4D coordinate changes when a 4D object moves in any 3D direction. Likewise, there is a new subset of six directions which extend our 3D coordinate system. Similarly, we have up, down, left, right, forward, and backward, while the fourth dimension has an additional up, down, left, right, forward, and backward. To keep mathematics straight, we should refer to those directions native to force to comprehend in concept. To be called X4, Y4, and Z4 as to correspond with the fourth dimension. There is much to learn, however, there are intelligent entities out there who know a lot more than we do. All we can do is try to explore and hopefully understand the new perceptions of physical sight we encounter while venturing through the dimensions in search of who we are and what our purpose is here in the universe.